Performance appraisals are very subjective. The higher you are in the organization, in your career, the more it is subjective and politicized. Performance appraisal become based on whose agenda was met the higher you are in, the, in an organization. It is never objective. In my career, I have had the best performance appraisal and the worst from a simple, single, the same action and deliverables in my job. In my career, which basically is supporting countries in the context of humanitarian needs, I've, my approach has always been to build the capacity of the countries where I've served to address their own humanitarian issues. I've often felt that as an international United Nations organization supporting countries in, hum in addressing humanitarian needs, we must ensure that we are building the capacity of these countries to address their own humanitarian needs. I've been very impatient about protracted international humanitarian presence. So when I go into any country, I support those countries. I build the capacity of the national staff. I build the capacity of the systems, the government, to do, for the, do it for themselves. And I advocate to the international systems to build the capacity of the national systems. I believe in self-determination. I believe the dignity of individuals responding to their needs is critical to addressing humanitarian issues. And being posted in, in the developing South, that's what I do. Now, serving under a, a Pan-African boss in Kenya, I got an excellent, the top performance appraisal for being seen to build the national capacity in terms of my communication, building national self-confidence in addressing the issue. This was an African boss from Liberia. In, in delivering the same output, now this time with a Danish European male boss, I was given a bad performance appraisal because I was not meeting the agenda of perpetuating and continuing international humanitarian presence in Africa. So these are, I delivered the same thing, but I got two different appraisal, the best and the worst. And that happens the higher you go in your career. And we see that playing out. We see that playing out with the response to COVID-19 under the leadership of the African, the Ethiopian head, director general of the World Health Organization. Now, I could start to say this myself, but an article published in The Guardian, April 11, captures my sentiment aptly. So I'm going to quote from it and speak from it. Now, we are putting the current director general, an African, under fire and observing his performance appraisal, but we've never done that for any other head of the World Health Organization. We have dealt with HIV, A, the spread, under the World Health Organization lead. We have dealt with Ebola, but we've never questioned the performance of the leaders of World Health Organization at this time. But we are doing it with this African man. Performance appraisal is subjective. Now, let's understand that. United States of America is the worst hit right now been going on for more than two, in coronavirus. Months. They are angry Abuses. and they are miffed. They're looking for who to blame. Oh. <laughs> An African or head of the World Health Organization is an easy target. But let's look at the names. role of the World Health Organization. Black Suddenly, you are empowering... Negro. An organization with a power I'm you've taken away from it so that you can blame it. Proud of we must understand that, that the Negro head, black, black, the black. head, the director and general of the World Health Organization alerted the world early in time, early warning about the impact of coronavirus. The, the initial response from I the United States was, oh, China is going to be affect, affected. Because oh, that means our, co our economy, we have an edge over China. But now they are blaming the World Health Organization, the organization for delayed what alert. Is, but United States was alerted in time. But they thought it was a pandemic person. for China alone, and that when would give their economy an edge. But right now we're blaming was insulted when <laughs> the Africa Director was insulted. General of the World Health Organization. Then Let me speak from the then article 
published today in The Guardian. Today, I mean April 11. crossing the line. It says... Where it's personal, even desperate, I didn't care. The article is titled, The World Health Organization WHO versus Coronavirus. Why it can't handle this pandemic. It was written by Stephen Buranyi, published in The Guardian, April 11th. It says... If, like me, you have been confined to your home, glued to the news and nurse, nursing ever greater anxiety about the state of the world, you have probably become familiar with the sight of the World Health Organization's Director General, Tedros Adunam Ghebreyesu, and his daily press briefing. Tedros, as he's known, is a calming presence in the midst of the crisis. Flanked by an international cast of scientists, he always seems confident that if we have hope, listen to the experts and pull together, we will get through this. Yes, as an African working in the international system, the United, working in the United Nations, the sight of Tedros gives me joy and pride. I feel I'm proud to watch him. He sounds competent. He's flanked by experts. So he speaks. He's a, he's a man that consults. He's a man that pulls resources together to ensure the world is getting the best. But you know what? As this article says, that is not the world we live in. We hear, we've been getting tweets. Let me quote one. I'm quoting this tweet now. Did WHO really blew it for some reason? Funded largely by the United States, yet very China-centric. This was tweeted by the United States Donald Trump on April 7th. And this is summing up just one of the many lines of criticism the World Health Organization is currently facing. It is not just Trump. Even some of the World Health Organization supporters in government, academia, and the NGOs argue that since the start of the coronavirus crisis, it has caved in to nationalist bullies, praised draconian quarantine measures and failed to protect the liberal international order of which it is, it, is a, it is a linchpin. You've got a situation where it looks like WHO doesn't want to exercise its authority, said David Fiedler, a fellow in global health at the Council on Foreign Relations and a regular consultant to the World Health Organization. Yo, now you have consultant to the World Health Organization criticizing their boss, criticizing Tedros, because they feel, oh, we have to side with Americans now that are bashing somebody who we know is doing an excellent job. But what we don't hear is how, meanwhile, says this article, what we don't hear says this article is meanwhile the World Health Organization is desperately, and has been so, desperately struggling to get its 194 member states to actually follow its guidelines, follow its guidance. The World Health Organization's leaders are very frustrated, said John McKenzie, a virologist and advisor to, to, on the World Health Organization Emergency Response Committee. The messages come out loud and clear, and some disregard the warnings. The U.S. largely did. U, the U.K. largely did. The United States of America that is facing an onslaught of coronavirus ignored the warning of the World Health Organization and is now blaming it for the pandemic, for the wildfire spread of the pandemic. You're blaming a source you refuse to, you undermine, and you refuse to listen to. There's a simple reason for this. For all the responsibility vested in the World Health Organization, it has little power. And countries like the United States of America took that power from the World Health Organization that the United States of America is now blaming from, from, for the spread of coronavirus in the United States. The United States refused to listen to the World Health Organization and is now blaming the World Health Organization for the spread. The World Health Organization has no power because countries like the United States have treated it so. Unlike international bodies such as the World Bank Organization, the World Health Organization, which is a specialist body of the United Nations, has no ability to bind or sanction its members. Its annual operating budget is, a, is just $2 billion. $2 billion. And this is smaller than many of the university hospitals in the United States. And it's split among many public health and research projects. The World Health Organization is less like a military general or elected leader 
with a strong mandate and more like an underpaid sports coach, wary of losing the dressing room. Yes. On 11th March, the day the head of the World Health Organization, Tedros, declared coronavirus a pandemic, he spoke darkly of alarming levels of inaction from many countries, including the United States of America. Pressed by journalists to name them, Mike Ryan, the usually no-nonsense Irish trauma doctor who heads the World Health Organization COVID-19 response, demurred. You know who you are, he said, adding that we don't criticize our member states in public. If we don't criticize, if WHO is so cautious in not criticizing its member states in public, should we back off blaming the World Health Organization for what it is not responsible for? We should stop blaming the head of the World Health Organization, Tedros, for what he's not responsible for. His presence, his coming presence in this time of the coronavirus crisis has been a blessing to the world. He's been calmed, consultative. He's done an excellent job. He should not be blamed for the mistakes, from the lack, from, for the inaction from the United States. They delayed in acting. Rather than blaming and name calling, the United States should just get on track, learn from China, who's been able to level the curve on the spread of coronavirus. This is not a time for blame game. Definitely, this is not a time for racism and racist blame game and racist performance appraisals. We see through it. I'm a girl about a 10 I should fuck her in the best yeah.